Okay, so today we're going to be doing our mineral notes, looking at different types of minerals and how we identify minerals. So first off, minerals are parts of rock. They're what make up rock. So we've talked a little bit this year about atoms. We've talked about elements and compounds. So we're going to look at how those atoms, those teeny tiny building blocks of matter, combine to form elements. We've already talked about that. And then how those elements combine to form compounds. And when we get a lot of those compounds together, they can form minerals, like SiO2, which would be like sand, silicon dioxide. And then those minerals get together and form something else we'll talk about later, rocks. Okay, so rocks are formed by minerals. The diagram is going to show us how atoms form elements, form minerals, and then rocks. Okay, minerals are naturally occurring solids with a definite crystalline structure. So they are structured on the inside like a crystal. We're on the mineral notes page, that second blank under the diagram. Minerals are naturally occurring solids with a definite crystalline structure. Some common minerals are quartz. Quartz is, uh, have you guys ever been to the, the places where you buy like all those shiny polished rocks and you can put a bunch of them in a bag and then they'll sell you that bag for like five dollars or whatever you know what I'm talking about a lot of times they'll put different types of quartz in there so that's a common one um, mica they'll make a lot of countertops out of mica feldspar you guys know diamond gypsum talc and calcite talc is what they make baby powder out of so minerals are really common we don't always see them, but we generally have an idea of what they are. Minerals have a definite chemical composition. So just like we said elements and compounds are very strict in what they're made out of, so are minerals. Those, that chemical composition gives each mineral a set of unique properties, and we use those properties in order to identify the minerals, decide what that mineral is. Uh, I don't know exactly. It could be certain ones could be. Ooh, it's gross. What? Okay. So we'll talk about today what those properties are and how we use them to identify minerals. Okay, so those common properties. The first one is going to be luster. Luster is a measurement of how light is reflected off a mineral surface. We can call it metallic or non-metallic, like the fluorite here would be metallic, the quartz would be non-metallic. We might also say that something is shiny or it's dull, whether it reflects light or not. So make sure you're in that chart, filling in the blank in the chart with light. Hardness. Hardness is a quantitative measurement, so we give it a number. Keep your hands to yourself. Stop. It's a measurement of the resistance of a mineral to being scratched. So it determines, can that mineral be scratched easily, or is it not scratched so easily? And you have two scales. Because remember, a mineral is going to have a set hardness. So a mineral is going to have a number on that hardness scale, and we can use that number to decide which mineral it is, or identify which mineral it is. Okay? We'll use two scales, Mohs scale and a field scale. Mohs scale is what scientists use in a laboratory, and if you don't have the fancy tools that a scientist has, you're going to be using the field scale because it's going to use more common items. And we'll talk a little bit more about those scales in just a minute. The next one is the streak. Streak is the powder that a mineral leaves behind. We usually use a streak plate, which is kind of a rough piece of tile. And we look at what color the powder left 
the behind is, and we'll describe it with individual powders, or the color of the individual powder. Sometimes, sometimes the streak is the color you think it will be, and sometimes it's not, which is why we can use streak to identify minerals. Density, we talked about earlier this year. What do we say about density? How do we feel about it? I, don't I, don't know. I love density. I heart density because remember, density is mass divided by volume. It's a quantitative measurement, which again means we use numbers. So that N in there for quantitative means we use numbers. <laughs> Quantitative, we use numbers. Okay, and we measure it in grams per milliliter. The last property that we'll be looking at is the color. Okay, it's a qualitative measurement. So we use letters. We use letters and words to describe it. So, like, the sulfur in the picture, what color is the sulfur in the picture? Yellow. It's going to be yellow. All sulfur is going to be yellow. So that's one way we use color to identify it. If it's yellow, we can make a pretty good guess that it's sulfur. Okay, the hardness scales. In a professional scientific laboratory, they would have the money to buy diamonds. We don't. And use the Mohs scale to test the hardness. Here on campus, we have things like steel nails that we can use to test the hardness. So we will be using the field scale and figuring out about where a mineral would go on Mohs hardness scale. Your fingernail, which has a hardness of 2.5, can be used to scratch the mineral. If you can scratch the surface, then you know that the hardness is less than 2.5. Okay. So it's this 10 point scale, the bigger the number, the harder it is. So you would say, if you can scratch it with your fingernail, that the hardness is less than 2.5. So we're on that second page of notes now, guys. Let's make sure we're following along. Okay. Be filling in fingernail. Put the lid on your foot, please. Okay. The next thing you would use is a penny. A penny has a hardness of three, which is slightly harder than your fingernail. If you can scratch, if you can't scratch it with your fingernail, but you can scratch it with a penny, you would say that your hardness is about between two and a half and three. So it would be harder than two and a half, but not as hard as three. Okay, the next one, a steel nail has a hardness of 5.5. If the penny doesn't scratch it, but the steel nail does, you would estimate that your hardness is going to be between 3.0 and 5.5. So it's harder than a penny, but not as hard as a steel nail. And a steel nail is going to be the hardest object that we have to test with. So if it is harder than a steel nail, if it's not scratched by a steel nail, you would say its hardness is greater than 5.5. Okay, just really quick, here's Mohs scale compared to the field scale. So over here you have the official hardness on Mohs scale. On this side, you have the hardness based on a field scale. So 5.5 is a bigger number than 5. Is appetite that has a hardness of 5 harder or not as hard as glass? Kyle? It's not as hard. It's not as hard. So glass will do what to appetite? It'll scratch it. It'll scratch it. Jason, uh, a fingernail has a hardness of 2.5. Calcite has a hardness of three. Which one's going to scratch which one? Neither. Three times. Three times. Wait, what? Calcite <laughs> or fingernail? Which one's harder? Uh, three. 
So calcite or the fingernail? Calcite. So calcite. Calcite's going to have the same hardness as a copper penny. But what's Okay, what about talc? What's going to scratch talc? Everything. Good. I know you did. So talc is going to be scratched by everything. So we will use these scales to get an estimate of what our hardnesses are. Okay, that's all we're going to do with our notes for today. Go ahead and put them away and be ready for a video. So voices are off, desks are clear, heads are up.